Hello and welcome to the With Flow podcast, a weekly show for purpose-driven, high achievers who are ready to ditch the hustle. I'm your host, Laura from Business With Flow, cyclical business mentor and systems and planning queen. My mission is to empower you to run your business and your launches without the burnout. In this podcast, we'll be chatting all things cycle syncing, intuition, and doing business your way, combined with some of the more practical aspects, like systems and planning and tech. So let's jump into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to episode 84 of the With Slow podcast. And this one's going to be interesting episode, something a little bit different than what I would normally talk about. Over the last probably six, eight months, I've become really disillusioned with the online business world. It started to feel like the only thing people care about anymore is how much money they can make. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not against people making money. I absolutely believe that rich women will change the world. I want people to be successful and make a ton of money. But it's really started to feel a little bit like the online business world had become a massive business coaching pyramid scheme. You know, this coach would teach you how to get to 10k months. Meanwhile, she was working with a coach that would teach you how to get to 50k months, who was then working with a coach who was teaching how to get to 100k months. And there was never any ends to it. It was just the next level after the next level after the next level. No one seemed to care about the impacts that they could have on the world, how they could help their clients, what a difference they could make. It's literally just about how much money you could make. So for the last couple of months, I've been doing a lot of unfollowing on Instagram, really cleaning up my newsfeed, looking at different places for inspiration and ideas outside of the online business world, how people market and sell their services and their products and things like that. Now, I'm a huge music lover. I'm a huge movie lover. So those are two industries that I have been paying attention to in particular. And so I started to look at how some of the artists that I love and follow launch and promote new albums, tours, that kind of thing. And of course, it's been perfectly timed to watch and observe the completely insane release of Taylor Swift's new album, Midnight. Now, whether you love Taylor Swift or hate her, there are definitely things that we can learn from her and how she and Taylor Swift as a company and as a brand have approached this launch. Now, of course, I'm not a marketing mentor. I'm not going to give you marketing advice. But I am one of those naturally observant and analytical people. I love to just sit back, watch, observe, see what information, what tips, tricks, that kind of thing that I can glean. So in today's episode, that's what I want to share with you. Some of the things that I've observed in watching Taylor Swift release her new album. So the first point that we have to remember is that even though this album launch was insane and she broke all sorts of records this is not her first album this is her 10th i think so she's been at this for years practicing and honing her craft refining and improving her success did not come overnight it came through years of creating launching learning redoing it again and again and again And that is one of the biggest things that I've started to get a little frustrated with when you look at people in the online business world who've come into their business and six months later, they're making ridiculous sums of money, but they're not upfront about the experience that they've had maybe in the corporate world, or maybe this isn't their first business. And so they're preaching that you too can make a hundred K in your first six months or something like that. When for most people. That is not the way that it is going to happen. No, I'm not saying it can't, but for most people, if you don't have the skills and marketing and business and that kind of thing, you have to learn it along the way. So remembering that success doesn't come overnight. It comes through growing and evolving and learning. The second point is around the community that she has created with her fans. And again, this has been years and years in the making. But she's created this community around her. She leaves these little 
hints and Easter eggs in her artwork and in her songs and in her videos and fans love to decrypt all of that stuff and so then among them they're all in on trying to work out all those little cryptic clues and things and it just shows the importance of having connection with your community for uh, people who love Taylor Swift it's like they have their own secret little language I know movies and things do this as well but it's really creating ways to keep the conversation going and that relationship going between yourself and your community and really proving the value of spending the time and the energy to create that community. Now, the next couple of points are specifically around how she launched this album. She created a whole bunch of hype, anticipation, momentum, build up, so that the second that that album went live on Spotify, there were millions of people around the world ready to hit play and listen to it straight away. And of course, they did, and it broke all sorts of ridiculous records within the first 24 hours, the first week, whatever it is. It just shows the importance of that pre-launch phase, of creating that build-up, of creating the excitement and the hype and the anticipation and creating that sense of people wanting to buy your thing. And my caveat here for the online business world is because they want it and they need it, not because you're selling them an impossible pipe dream. So with that relationship that she has with her community, she was able to create that hype so that those raving diehard fans were there that remnant we were to press play. The second part is once it was live, she didn't just sit there and wait for people to go and find it on Spotify or Apple Music. She has been promoting the heck out of it. I've seen paid ads on my uh, Instagram newsfeed. I've seen her in TV, magazine interviews, all of those things. So it's not just putting it out there and hoping and praying that someone's going to find your thing. You have to get out there. You have to promote it. Even if it feels like you have already told everyone about it, who cares? Of course, pretty much everyone in the world has probably heard about Taylor Swift's new album in the last week. Does that stop her from getting out there and promoting it? No, of course it hasn't. So keep promoting. Don't just hope and pray. The next point I want to make is about haters. Now, anyone who knows Taylor Swift or has followed her journey over the years will know that she has had her haters. Not everyone loves her. A lot of people very staunchly despise this woman. But she still shows up. She still does her thing. She still makes music. And she does it for the people she knows love her. That want her music. That want to consume the things that she's creating. Now, we're all going to have haters. Or people who just don't resonate with the message or what it is that we're sharing in the world. Ours probably, hopefully, aren't going to be as spiteful and vocal and vicious as hers are. But it's just a reminder that you need to focus on the good side of things and just block, ignore, <laughs> delete the people who don't get it. You're here for the people who get it, not to try and convince those who don't. So don't waste your time and energy trying to convince them. And the last point that I wanted to make is not being afraid to grow and evolve and change. If you follow Taylor Swift for a number of years, you'll know her style of music started out as country, then she went very pop. She did a bit of folk, indie kind of stuff with her previous two albums, and now this one has come back to more of a pop genre. She is not afraid to just experiment, to evolve, to create music with where she's at at that point in time. She's not trying to create something because she knows this is what's popular right now. This is what my fans want. She's creating what she wants to create and letting it flow through her out into the world, trusting that the right people will like it and the right people will find it. She's not afraid to just be who she is, create what it is that she wants to create, be where she is at that point in time and experiment and have fun with it as well. Now. There's so much more that I could probably talk about when it comes to this album launch, but those are some of the key things that I've been picking up on on the last couple of weeks. And I really wanted to share them with you because there are so many things that we can learn 
from other industries around how we show up, how we market our business, how we promote our services, how we launch our courses, whatever it might be. So I hope that you enjoyed that episode, whether you love Taylor Swift or not, as I said, there is so much that you can learn from the way that Taylor Swift as a person and Taylor Swift as a brand or as an organization have gone about launching this album. It really is quite fascinating. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Until next week, bye for now.